Hey guys, welcome back. This is Bernard from the BTN HD, and today is all about the IPAM server, which stands for IP Address Management. And we are going to be configuring it inside Windows Server 2019 version 1809 build 17763.107. <laughs> All right, so first thing that we need to do is get inside your desktop, right? Click on Start, Server Manager, you know, let that load up. Click on Manage, Add Roles and Features. We're going to get the wizard, click on Next, Next again, Next again. It's not a server role, so we're going to click on Next. And it's a feature. So the feature is actually IP address management, IPAM server. We're going to give it a check mark. And there's a bunch of uh, additional things that we need for this to work correctly. So just click on add features, click on next. Uh, if you want, uh, you can click on restart the destination server automatically if required. And if you do that, you're going to get this nice little warning. Click on yes, click on install. The process takes between, I would say, three to five minutes. Uh, once it's done, that's it. Close it. Now you're going to see a new option within your server manager dashboard, and it's called IPAM. Pretty simple, right? So let's click on it. You're going to get a nice little overview and six steps that you need to do. Now the first step is already configured for you, and that's the connection of the IPAM server, depending on which server you picked. All right, And it also gives you a breakdown of what account has been connected to the IPAM server. Now, next thing you need to do is click on provision the IPAM server. So click on that. You get a nice little wizard here. This wizard is basically giving you a rundown that uh, a bunch of GPOs are going to be configured within your Active Directory uh, for this to work correctly. So click on next. Uh, you have an option to pick a Microsoft SQL Server or the Windows internal database. I picked the WID. I don't have a database as of yet, so I just left it as the default. Click on next and give your GPO name a prefix. So I gave it as BTNHD IPAM, right? Click on next and uh, apply. And it's going to start doing its thing. And once it's done, you're done. Not yet, because you still have to do an additional step. Uh, you have to do a Windows PowerShell commandlet for it to actually create itself. So the PowerShell commandlet is the following invoke dash IPAM GPO provisioning uh, with a parameter of dash domain, your domain, another parameter of GPO prefix name, which is IPAM, uh, another parameter of IPAM, the server frequent uh, full qualified domain name and the name of your IPAM server. Once you hit enter, you get this, you hit yes, it's going to start doing its thing. And it's going to start creating the GPO and you're done. Next thing you need to do is if you have a workstation that has access to the group policy management console, log into it and you're going to see uh, three new um, group policies. Okay. That's a good thing. That means the, the PowerShell commandlet worked good, right? Next thing that we need to do is configure the server discovery. That's the third step. So click on that. Uh, you're going to click on Get Forest, and once it does that, you're going to get this nice little information dialog box stating that a background task uh, has gone throughout your network. If everything works within the Select the Forest, you should see your domain. Uh, and then what you do is select domains to discover. That's automatically going to be uh, configured for you. So just click on Add. And it's going to drop it inside select the server roles to discover and click OK. And you're done on step three. The next step is step four, which is start the server discovery. So just click on the link and it's going to start doing its thing. Pretty simple. Uh, next one is select and add server to manage and verify the IPAM access. Now, step five, this is where I had a crap load of problems on select and add a server to manage. You're going to get to this part right here. Now, when I was reading up the Microsoft documentation, when you get this, it's OK. When you right click on it, you want to get into edit server and you want to pick manage. Now, for me, when every time I pick manage, I was getting a crap load of problems saying one that the GPO wasn't created, but it were, you know, the GPOs were there Two, something about I had to manually add the permissions or something about the servers. I just I was having a lot of issues. And the problem was so you physically have to go inside your GPO, your DNS and your DHCP 
And within the security filtering, you have to add um, your domain controller or controllers. And within delegation, you have to give editing rights to your IPAM server. You have to do the same things to your DACP GPO. For security filtering, you're going to give, uh, you're going to add your domain controller or controllers. And for the delegation, you have to add the IPAM server and you have to give it edit rights. Once everything works, you right click here, you edit the server and you change the status to manage. And then you get that, you get that green check mark. Once you get that green check mark, you're good to go. That means everything is working. And the last step is retrieve the data from managed server. Now, if you're very impatient like me, you could click on this and it's going to start pre-populating this stuff. But eventually there's a task scheduler that's uh, created for you behind the scenes and it runs. I forgot what's the schedule. I think maybe every five to eight hours. I don't, I don't recall. But it's supposed to run automatically by itself. If not, you could just click on number six and it's going to start grabbing the stuff right away. And everything inside your DNS and your DACP scope and zones and your server groups and your event catalog and your access control, all that stuff will be pre populated. Because uh, it's basically taking all that information from your domain controller, uh, your DNS server, and your DACP server and just bringing it over to your IPAM server. When you click on number six to retrieve the data from the managed servers and you click on more, you get this nice little overview of details of what's running. There's a lot of stuff that runs to grab this information. So you just have to be patient. Eventually everything will say completed and then you're able to go inside each uh, part right here on the overview and then check out all your settings. And that's it guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to hit that like button and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace out.